What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. And you know, one of the things that can occur during the HSC, and if we're brutally honest, it's probably an inevitable, is that you will screw up an assessment result. It is almost guaranteed to happen, and really then, the question becomes, how do you turn things around? Because it will happen. And so in today's interview, I'm gonna be catching up with a student, Campbell, who uh, had this happen probably a couple of times, if we're being really honest, for advanced maths. And you know, Campbell ended up turning things around with a 30% mark improvement for advanced maths. And so we're gonna dive in and find out a couple of things with Campbell today. Number one, we're gonna find out what are the things that he did to literally double his marks for advanced maths. Number two though, we're also gonna find out why on earth did he not drop it? I mean, given that there was a number of challenging results, Campbell made the tough decision to keep on going. And along the way, our hope is that if you're struggling with advanced maths, you're gonna get a number of practical tips and strategies that you can use so that you can turn things around yourself for advanced maths. So welcome, Campbell. Hello. So, uh, advanced maths, um, you know, uh, what happened? I mean, 30%, I think you were sharing with me, you got an assessment. When did that happen? Was that year 11? Was that year 12? So yeah, I've struggled with maths pretty much most of my schooling life. And um, yeah, the 30% happened from after trials and I got 30%, like the actual mark in trials, and then I got a 60% in the HSC. So. Well, so let's get clear on that because I think that's quite yeah. remarkable, right? 30% in trials, like for most students to get a 30% in a trial, is like I can just imagine that the self-talk is, I am screwed. Yeah. <laughs> is that what you were feeling when you saw that? Yeah, I was ready to give up. I was like, I don't, I'm done with maths. Well, now, just to dial back for a moment. So, I mean, you, you ended up doubling your mark, 30 to 60% between trials and HSC. So it's proof that you can do that in a very quick period of time. So for yeah. students watching this that's, you know, desperately thinking, you know, I'm screwed, how do I turn things around quickly? Your story is proof of that. But for a moment, I want to dial back a little bit. Um, and before we look at the turnaround, um, I mean, uh, you'd had some marks that weren't great prior to that, as you said. Maths has never been a strong sort of suit for you. What prompted you to keep advanced maths? I mean, in most cases, I think students that are struggling, you know, drop down, right? And they end up taking standard, but you didn't. Why? Um, so originally, I chose advanced maths because I needed advanced maths to go to Sydney Uni. And so, Does yeah. Sydney Uni requiring Yeah, so I was like, you know what, I'll just put up with this advanced maths course and just get the mark I need and I'm on my way. So, um, yeah, it was a little different than that though because once I'd started doing it, I found it was a bit harder than I thought it was going to be. And so I considered dropping, I'd say, it probably quite a few times. I had the papers ready to drop quite a few times as well. Um, but why I kept it was, I'd say, I'd say I got quite a good support network, and um, I had quite a few people saying like, you can do this with enough like the right practice, like the right kind of um, study and stuff like that. So with the right strategies, the sense was you yeah. could you could do it, and that really sounds like that combined with enjoying it a little. Yeah, and so I, I'd say maths, I quite enjoyed like advanced maths once I got something. Like, even if it was just a simple thing, once I got it and did it over and over again, I quite enjoyed that. I don't think I'd get the same enjoyment doing general maths, just, that's just me personally. But um, once I did, once I just got something and did it a few times, and then I could apply that to other questions, and I'd be able to maybe get that right. Yeah, I quite enjoyed that little, like, success. That little feeling of success from getting just one question right. So then, the reasons that I'm really hearing for continuing with one, being mindful of university preferences, yeah. right? So it really started there. It was like, look, if I if I don't take it, Sydney Uni is a shutdown option, or at least I've got another year of like undergraduate maths I need to be taking in a different degree. So that's the first driver. And then the second driver was, well, I've got a support network here. Like actually I have help that can help me turn it around. Mm -hmm. And then the third is an element of enjoyment to an extent. And I'm going to assume here, just from I know prior conversations we've had as well, that I'm imagining there was also an element of, hey, you know, the higher level of maths I can take, the better equipped I'm going to be, yeah. just for the challenges of life beyond, right? Whether or not yeah. you're working in business or studying a commerce degree or whatever. Mm. So you keep it, which is a brave yeah. decision. You <laughs> fight through. Now let's jump back to, you know, how we turn things around from from 30 to to 60, right? In 
what was really a two month period as well, you know, which is roughly the time period that we have between yeah. trials and HSC. So, um, you know, what was step number one? Step number one, after getting my result back in, um, for trials, I guess I just looked at the, past pa the, the paper and I was like, oh gosh, this has a lot of work to do. So um, I guess I just looked through it, I looked where I, where I made all my mistakes and um, I, I went to my teacher and I was like, hey, look, how can I improve in here, here, here. Um, so yeah, that was probably my first step. And then my second step, I'd say I, I probably did the past paper again and I did, um, I did those questions, the ones I got wrong and um, I tried to apply the feedback that I got from my teacher um, just to kind of do those questions again. And then I'd say after that, I'd, so I'm not the best at maths and so I found that I could get the most marks probably in the first half of the paper because it was, it was probably the easiest. And so um, I just found that I just got lots and lots of past papers and I just did the first section of the past paper over and over again because I knew I would um, eventually get those questions right. And I found they generally ask quite similar questions um, throughout the years of HSC. And so um, once I get one small thing right, one simple thing right, I'll be able to answer the next question maybe and build upon that knowledge. Um, yeah, and I found, I found I quite enjoy getting that small thing right and I'll just build on my knowledge. So it sounds like really you ended up being quite strategic, yeah. right? And that, that strategy that came in here was to, to try to get 100% right of what you knew. Yeah. Uh, and so if that was 50% of the paper, let's say it was like 100% on that 50, and then if you could pick up whatever marks you could from the remainder that you were less confident like, about. Of course I didn't just forget about it. I still looked at it, obviously. But it's just the focus you yeah, place. The focus. And look, that's not an uncommon strategy, I think, you know, when you're looking at the different approaches you can take to maths. You know, I think one of the approaches is to yeah, try to maximize, you know, the the hundred percent of what you know, and then you leave the remaining time to try to yeah. you know, chip away, essentially. So it sounds like that was a, an effective strategy, which is great. So you've got one, redoing the paper, really doubling down on sort of those weak areas that were identified from that paper in your trials, and then two strategically doing past papers, getting pattern recognition, yeah. uh, as well as working on parts of the paper that, uh, that you, 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 know, you felt you were gonna maximize your marks. Now, my understanding is along the way, you, know, you were working with uh, Tiana, one of our tutors yeah. at Smart. you did a bit of work in the class prior and then jumped in as well to work with Tiana for some concerted, targeted, yeah. you know, trials to HSC sort of boot camp almost. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what, did, what did you guys do? What, what did the sessions involve working with Tiana? So pretty much I'd say, hey, look, we've been studying this the past week and um, I was like, maybe like this part I'm really struggling with, can we maybe work through that? And um, she was really great with that because um, she had a few worksheets that uh, we could do and we'd just like go over and over like several questions. And um, yeah, I just found it was really quite easy working with her because usually in class I'm afraid to put my hand up because I'm not the brightest, so I'm like, oh, this might be a dumb question. Um, but yeah, working with Tiana, I can ask those questions and I won't feel like judged, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I just felt really comfortable just asking questions and um, yeah, working with her. Yeah, fantastic. So it sounds like one, you were able to just share what, what you were struggling with, which was a change to, to the school environment. Um, and then the second thing is it sounds like it was just extra exposure to questions, yeah. you know, yeah, and, guess, and someone there to help you understand them. Yeah, I guess also the way she like um, went about those questions, it kind of suited my perspective. Like you can, I, I guess there's several perspectives you can take to a certain question. And um, I kind of view maths um, differently to other people and she really kind of keyed into that, I guess. So she kind of led it down my route. So she was able to work out, yeah, what you needed. Yeah and be able to adapt it so that maths all of a sudden started making more sense, mm, which, yeah. is, which is the hope. So then uh, let's talk about the sort of study that you did in the lead up uh, immediately, you know, the two weeks before the HSC exam. Right, what were you doing in those two weeks before for maths? Um, I was just doing past papers. And past were you doing the entirety of the past paper at this no, point? Because I, I know- I'd just be doing that first kind of section. Part. And then obviously I'd go to the answers and kind of see what I got wrong and then probably try and redo it. Um, I found myself doing that. And this was under time conditions? So would you still do 
the first half of the paper, but you know, half the time of yes. the, the total exam? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you were still really trying to mimic these exam conditions as much as you could, yeah. even if yeah. it was just with a strategic approach. Yeah. Fantastic. And then, uh, you know, day before, night before the exam, what were you doing for advanced maths? Well, first of all, get a good night's sleep. That's always helpful. And I guess I was, I was just looking over those few areas that I'm a bit unsure of. Like, you always got those areas that you're like, oh, I really don't know this basic key concept. And just going over those key concepts, because really those can kind of bring your mark up a bit, because they're kind of used a lot. So yeah. it, was a, it was basically, again, and I'm really hearing this time and time again from you, it was a prioritization of what are, uh, like a combination of what are key concepts yep. that I know are highly probable in this exam because of the pattern recognition I've yep. got from doing papers. And then it was like, if we look at these two little Venn diagram, you know, these two little circles create a Venn diagram, it's like what's highly probable to be examined, key concepts, and then here's what I don't know mm. very well. And it was like the overlap of the two was your core focus area essentially yep. the day before. Yeah. Awesome. So any final sort of tips or suggestions for students taking advanced maths, particularly for students that are taking it, that maybe were like you just really struggling with it and um, were finding it challenging? I reckon just don't give up. Just keep on practicing like maths. It's all about practice. Just keep on doing it over and over again, even if it's tiring and you're not getting it. Uh, just also keeping that feedback loop. Like once you um, get that one bit of feedback on one question, you'll be able to apply that in the future and get it right over and over again. So just keep on doing it, don't give up. I didn't give up and um, I improved quite drastically. Um, so yeah, you can do it guys. Just keep on, just keep practicing and keep that feedback loop going. Awesome, so there you've heard it guys. We've just heard, uh, you know, number one, some really practical and very strategic advice in how even if advanced maths is not your strong suit, how by focusing on key things, you can dramatically improve your results in a very quick period of time. And we've also heard some really good reasons for why, even if your results are not good for advanced maths, it's worth pushing on and continuing to take it. Now, if you have any further questions about just how to excel in advanced maths or anything that Campbell shared in today's interview, leave it in the comments below. Additionally, we've got an incredible team of teachers, tutors, and mentors across both small group classes and one-to-one -one that can support you, uh, turn things around for advanced maths, or you know, really just get more confident and push things along to improve your results. So don't be shy, get in touch with one of the team at Art of Smart. And finally, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because we do videos every week. So we will see you next week. Mm -hmm.